Good morning, everybody. I hope you're all well. This morning, as some of you will be watching this, I will be at Broome taking their first service back after lockdown. They're opening up today, so keep us all in your prayers, please. We're going to see how it goes. But I'm very excited to be sharing with them today, as I am uh, with the news that most places are opening up in the next couple of weeks or so. Uh, so I look forward to coming back into your pulpits and seeing your faces once more, better than seeing me on a computer screen, I hope. Uh, but I'm also happy to share with you here this morning, uh, Joe has asked me to bring a sermon to you. So today's message is on one of the lectionary readings, and it's the lectionary reading in Matthew chapter 15. And it's reading from verses 21 to 28. If you want to have a look at it, pause the video, uh, uh, have a read, and then come and listen to the thoughts afterwards. But it's about the story of the Canaanite woman. And my thoughts around this start before uh, this passage. Jesus is having a conversation with the Pharisees and they are challenging his disciples because they not washed their hands before they ate, which was one of the rituals that needed to be done. They were saying they were unclean. Now, how many of us before have been in trouble from our parents for not washing our hands before tea? Guilty as charged. And we're about this day and age with all the coronavirus stuff. Uh, how important is washing our hands right now and making sure we're keeping clean and uh, our hands are germ free? It is important, very vitally important. But Jesus doesn't condemn his disciples here in this passage. He challenges the Pharisees on unclean hearts rather than unclean hands. What about the heart, he says? What, is our hearts full of sin, full of bad things, or are they pure? And he was saying to the Pharisees, look at your heart, see how that is. Is it unclean? And then Jesus decides to withdraw to a place called Tyre and Sidon, which is on the outskirts of Israel and was predominantly a Gentile area. Now, Gentiles were considered unclean and sinful by the Jewish people. Uh, and unworthy of God's blessing. They were on the outside. They were outsiders. Uh, and so Jesus, some people say they was running away from the Pharisees who wanted to arrest him. Some people say he was making a point. I think he was making a point here. After that conversation about being unclean, he goes to a place that the Jews would consider is full of unclean people. And while he's there, this woman comes to see him, this woman who is in great need. Her daughter is afflicted by an evil spirit. Uh, but this woman is from this area. She's a Gentile, considered unclean and unworthy and a sinner. But also she's a Canaanite. Now, if you remember the story of the people of Israel entering the promised land, the Canaanites were one of the big enemies of the people. So not only was this woman a woman, she was a Gentile, she was considered unclean, unworthy and a sinner and she was also part of the tribe that was a sworn enemy of Israel. And she comes to Jesus and the disciples and what happens? Because of her heritage, because of who she is, she's rejected by the disciples. They try and get rid of her. They try and stop her coming to Jesus. And in fact, they say to Jesus, Jesus, dismiss her. She's doing our head in. Racial prejudice is something that's on everybody's lips at the minute, isn't it, in our world? With the Black Lives Matter movement, where people are condemned or uh, abused for their heritage and where they have come from or where their ancestors have come from. It hasn't changed. This was still happening then. This woman was rejected, probably because of who she was and where she was from. Yet, in this story, this woman continues to try and come to Jesus. And then what happens is Jesus seemingly rejects her too. I wonder if us as churches or us as individuals have ever missed a need like the disciples did here, 
or like Jesus seemed to have done here. I wonder if we've ever turned somebody away or not met a need where we could have brought some people to Jesus. It's important, isn't it, that in our time we keep our eyes open, we take our blinkers off and look for every opportunity that might come our way, every opportunity to meet a need, every opportunity to bring somebody to Jesus. And let's not miss sight of these times because it's important that we see our communities changed. And I said Jesus seemingly rejects this woman. How would you feel if, if Jesus seemed to reject you? I think I'd be devastated. I'd be really upset. And the other thing that I would think is, if you have only come for the people of Israel, because that was Jesus' response, how come you're in a Gentile area then? I'd be quite cross. But I think Jesus didn't wasn't rejecting her. He was making a point. He was looking for characteristics to come out of this woman so that he could then respond to her. And the first characteristics that she displays is a sense of humility. She recognises Jesus as king and her superior. And she comes to his feet and she says, Jesus, yeah, you're right. I'm not worthy. I'm a Gentile. I'm a sinner. But even the dogs eat the crumbs under the master's table. She recognises her place. I wonder if we come to God in that way. Or if we stand in our own uh, abilities, in our own righteousness, in our own standing. If we try and claim to God and come to God in that way on our own back or do we come recognising we aren't worthy recognising we are sinners in need of grace the other thing she displays is persistence and boldness isn't it she's turned away by the disciples repeatedly and they're trying to get rid of her and Jesus seemingly turns away yet she's still at it she's still like a dog without a bone uh, and it's like it reminds me of my daughters when they want something. They ask constantly, ice cream, please, ice cream, please, ice cream, please. You know what? That's how God wants us to come to him. He doesn't want us to give up. Sometimes when it doesn't look like God is working in our lives or answering our prayers, it's easy just to give in. But God wants us to keep trying, keep coming with boldness. Keep asking him over and over again. There's so many stories in the Gospels around persistent, the parable of the persistent widow as well, about constantly asking God for what we need or what we want in our lives. And the last thing she shows is a bold faith, isn't it? Her faith in Jesus is unshaken. Because she comes to him knowing she's unworthy, knowing she's been rejected, knowing nobody's listening to her. But she still believes in Jesus, the one who can heal her daughter, the one who can meet that need. And she's at his feet. And what does Jesus do? He says, your faith has made your daughter well. He responds to her faith. He responds to her boldness and her humility and her persistence. Today, we need to come to the feet of Jesus. We need to come boldly. We need to come in faith. And we need to come persistently in humility, recognising that we are sinners just in need of grace, that he is our king, that he can do all things and that we can put our trust in him and then Jesus makes his point the uncleanliness the sinner he opens his arms and welcomes in he welcomes all the mess all the uncleanliness all the sinners all those in need he welcomes them in today I wonder what our need is maybe we're afraid 
like we looked at last week, fear. Maybe we are struggling with sin in our lives. Maybe we're ill and there's sickness around us. Maybe there's problems and things weighing us down. Let us come to the feet of Jesus with all our uncleanliness, with all our issues, and allow him to sweep us in, to encompass us in, our, in his arms and meet that need of ours today. You'll be in my prayers. God bless. And I hope to see you soon. Goodbye for now.